There's a long-standing history of practical effects in horror movies, from the very early days of the genre to the smash hit slashers of the 1980s and beyond. However, as time has progressed, more and more horrors have opted to move their effects divisions into the digital space. Sometimes this isn't exactly hard to spot, but in other cases, the digital trickery is so subtle that you wouldn't notice it unless someone pointed it out to you. Consider this very list someone pointing it out to you. Because I am Gareth, this is What Culture Horror, and here are 10 CGI horror movie shots you never noticed. Number 10, The Island's Introduction, Shutter Island. With more twists and turns than a dancing boa constrictor caught in a clothes mangle, Shutter Island is a tense horror thriller from Martin Scorsese about an FBI agent who gets more than he bargained for when he arrives at a mental institute in search of a missing patient. The institute is on an island, in case that wasn't painfully obvious from the title. The titular location is introduced in a great shot where US Marshal Teddy Daniels and his partner Chuck All arrive there via boat. You'd have thought that this was just a regular shot of the location where the movie was filmed, which was Peddock's Island near Boston, Massachusetts. But there was some post-production trickery at play here. In order to make the island look more eerie, extra fog was added in post giving birth to that great moment where the boat finally pierces through the mist and reveals the menacing rock in all its looming glory. It's a relatively minor addition, but one that does a lot of work in setting the scene for all of the dark revelations that are to come. But before we go any further, I want to know something right now. What is your favourite spooky thriller of all time? Was it Shutter Island or something else? You let me know in the comment section down below. Number 9. The Storm Crawl The man behind the 2006 Hills of Ice remake and the Daniel Radcliffe vehicle Horns, and produced by horror royalty Sam Raimi, Crawl from 2019 pits a father-daughter combination against a horde of alligators after they invade their home during a hurricane. Think of it as a mixture of Sharknado and Panic Room, and it somehow works. Rather than use real gators, the team opted for CGI versions of the scaly beasts which must have really upset the Alligator Acting Union. Now this is fairly obvious, but what's more subtle is that the film's inciting incident is also a work of digital fiction. All of the rain and wind seen in Crawl were added in after the fact, which is odd considering how easy it can be to recreate stormy conditions on a film set. Why Aya opted to take this route is unclear, especially given the modest budget he had to work with, but it came out looking pretty decent in the end, so there are no hard feelings whatsoever. Number 8. The Swamp, The Skeleton Key From a place where gators shouldn't be to a place where they definitely should be. The Swampy Plantations of New Orleans The Skeleton Key stars Kate Hudson as a nurse who finds herself involved in a sinister plot involving an elderly couple and their hoodoo magic ways. The action centers around the couple's large home in Terrebonne Parish, which is just outside of the Big Easy. And while the movie was shot on a real plantation, not everything that made it into the final cut was real. The movie was shot at Felicity Plantation, which is in St. James Parish, a more northerly part of Louisiana. As a result, the area surrounding the location wasn't really swampy, but rather a series of fields used for farming. This was no good, folks. With no way of filming an actual swamp, the team behind the skeleton key decided they'd just make their own and add it in once everything was already shot. Now it sounds like a lot of work, but Louisiana and swamps are so inexorably linked in the eyes of many that there really needed to be one to make this movie feel complete. And complete it felt. Number 7. The Zombie Baby, Dawn of the Dead 2004 Taking on the challenge of remaking George A. Romero's Dawn of the Dead, a Stone Cold classic was not an easy one. But in 2004, Zack Snyder gave it a damn good go. And his version of the zombie tale still holds up pretty well. One scene where the survivors of the apocalypse are confronted with the true horror of their situation is when group member Luda gives birth and dies immediately. As if this wasn't bad enough, her newborn baby has also been turned into a zombie, and the group has to take the harrowing decision to kill it. Yeah, that's pretty bleak. You'll be pleased to know that rather than get an actual baby and cover it in green paint, the crew behind Dawn of the Dead created their monstrous sprog on a computer and added it afterwards. Considering just how hokey this definitely could have looked, the effects here are really strong, especially by 2004 standards. Had the CGI been bad, it would have undermined a hugely emotional scene. But everything went off without a hitch in the end. Number 6. The Logs Final Destination 2 In the first Final Destination, 
Termination movie, great lengths were undertaken to ensure that the plane crash sequence that opened proceedings looked as realistic as possible. Presumably, this tired the team out a little, as when time came to make the sequel, they let a computer do all the work instead. The second installment in the franchise opens in a near-identical fashion to its predecessor. Someone has a premonition about a serious accident, the accident then happens, some people survive thanks to the premonition. This time around, it's a logging truck that causes all the trouble. It crashes, sending its wooden cargo spilling over the road, leading to some very, very nasty deaths. And people say trees are meant to be good for you. Since real logs wouldn't bounce the way the crew wanted them to, they used special effects to bring them to life. And a lot of work went into making sure they looked as realistic as possible. While the logs and some of the blood in this scene were fake, the cars were not, as actual people driving real vehicles had to pretend they were being splattered. Kudos to those extras, eh? And kudos to you for stopping by to watch this video today. And while you're here, hit that subscribe button down below for more what culture in your life. Number 5. Mama's Hair Mama When two children are found in a remote cabin years after they first went missing, their family rejoices at being able to bring them home. Unfortunately, the celebrations don't last long. As it turns out, they've actually been adopted by a malicious spirit. Awkward. This is the premise of Mama, a 2013 film about loss, grief, and the powerful bond of parenthood. The titular spectre continues to haunt the girls and their family from the shadows, only getting fully revealed towards the end of the runtime. While most of the creature is brought to life by Javier Botet, a tremendous physical actor who has played a number of other horror monsters, one feature had to be dealt with using technology. Mama's wild, unruly hair was created from CGI, which is how it looks like it's magically floating in the air. Botet was able to do everything else himself, but even he couldn't defy the laws of physics. It might seem a bit silly to spend so much time and money on a character's hair, but imagining Mama without her levitating locks is a hard task. It's part of her look and therefore part of this film's appeal. Number 4. The Environment's Monsters Before he made Rogue One, A Star Wars Story and The Creator, British science fiction bigwig Gareth Edwards broke through with 2010's Monsters, a sci-fi horror horror Monsters takes place in a world where a spaceship crash leads to an invasion of Earth by huge creatures with hideous tentacles. The film is set primarily in Mexico, and a lot of the filming actually took place there too, along with various other South American countries. But since the budget for the movie was just $500,000, Edwards had to get creative when it came to building his world. Most of the background shots, the signs, the bits of wreckage, etc., were done using special effects, and not just any special special effects, but software you could buy in a regular PC store. Edward spent five months putting together all 250 CGI scenes for the film, and the end result was something that looked about 100 times more expensive. Monsters is a truly stunning film with a great story behind it, and hopefully its success made up for so many of Edward's sleepless nights. Number 3. Johnny Depp's Eyes Dark Shadows When it was announced that Tim Burton would be helming a big screen remake of a dark 60s soap opera, with a cast including Michelle Pfeiffer, Johnny Lee Miller, and Helena Bonham Carter, obviously, expectations were very, very high. Unfortunately, Dark Shadows did not impress upon its release, and has largely been forgotten about when it comes to the gothic maestro's back catalogue. The main character in the film, a vampire from the 1700s who wakes up in the 1970s, is called Barnabas Collins and is played by another Burton favourite, Johnny Depp. As talented a performer as Mr. Depp is, he is still still human, which means he has to blink. Burton didn't like the idea of his undead monster doing this, so called in the effects department to sort it out, so that when you watch the picture, you won't see Barnabas flutter his eyes even once. It's this sort of attention to detail that makes Burton so beloved by his fans, if only the rest of the film had been better. Number 2. Ghostface's Knives Scream 4 11 years after the initial Scream trilogy wrapped up, Wes Craven decided to return to the world of Woodsboro with a new installment, Scream 4. Predictably, a new ghost face arrives to terrorize faces old and new. And as ever, the villain has their trusty knife on hand to do some serious damage. However, 11 years is a long time in filmmaking, and new technology allowed Craven to experiment a little. In previous films, Ghostface's knives were retractable, meaning they could be plunged into a victim's chest without actually harming them. This time, though, the veteran director, in what would be his final film prior to his death in 2015, decided to make all of the blades CGI. 
with the hope of adding more blood and gore in post. Not a bad idea, especially as it was barely noticeable in the final cut. But that does mean that all the actors here were pretending to be scared of a person carrying an empty knife handle around on set, which is a ridiculous image if ever there was one. Fear the handle. Number 1. The Pale Man's Eyes, Pan's Labyrinth In terms of iconic horror monster creatures, you don't get much better than the utterly hideous guardian of the magical dagger from Guillermo del Toro's Pan's Labyrinth. The Pale Man! Tall and slender with nails like knives and skin like murky pond water, the Pale Man chases young Ophelia after she foolishly takes food from his table, and is as big a part of the film as anything else really, despite his relatively brief screen time. The most memorable feature of the monster has to be his removable eyes, which fit into the palms of his hands when he's on the move. Many people assume that the eyes were achieved with practical effects, as they seem so damn real, but actually it was technical wizardry that made them possible. Now Doug Jones, who played the Pale Man, did have to dress up for this part, and for his other role as the Fawn. Apparently he spent an average of 5 hours sat in makeup every time he was needed to play the roles, which is evidently enough time to transform even the most reasonable of people into a child-eating monster. Now you know.